do this. Everything unlimited. KU Flux deck. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show, Vigil James. I'm Kevin. And I'm Jared. So, um, uh, I, I've, I've played through this. Jared has not. Um, this is actually made by, well, I mean... You, you'll pretty much get everything you need to know out of uh, the intro. This looked really interesting, though. It blew my mind. Uh, Maybe so. it'll blow my mind. Yeah. Uh, it, is the volume all right? Uh, we should probably turn it down a little bit. We're probably getting picked up on the mic a little bit. Okay. Here. Now, because this is narration heavy, you're going to want some volume. Okay. I'll, I'll adjust it okay. as we go. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. You might want to turn the subtitles on. Possibly, I don't know if. Well, I, if you'll I you'll get the get chance. To the menu right now, so. Hi there, thank you very much for playing the beginner's guide. My name is Davy Reedon. I wrote the Stanley Parable, and while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're okay. going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. That sounds uh, familiar. I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around I know here, this by the way. And uh, uh, no. mostly it's just... It's Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. It, it's sort of dust. What I like but is that even though he starts I mean, I, from the I simple aesthetic of a desert yeah. town, <laughs> but he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, yep. and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. Mm. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder. What was going through his head as he was building this? That's this the is standard what I like about all of you turn textures off on. I mean, maps. not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being mm -hmm. really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them not, onto the though? internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image well, of himself as a recluse. <laughs> uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, <laughs> you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. It's because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is okay. loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. How exactly did you get your hands on this? Also, why do I know the name Coda? I feel like you, that was in the no, magic circle. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Coda was the name of uh, Ashley Birch's character. Okay. So we're going to be fairly quiet during this playthrough because it is very narration heavy. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. How's it control? A little clunky. Not the worst I've ever done, but it's just floaty movement. Oh, I gotcha. Weird. Security call reached. 
Why didn't those spawn until now? It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. I can't. <laughs> but ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy Begin to yeah. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant skybox. Coda is a genius developer, I don't know if anybody has said Apparently the space but... station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. <laughs> There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine, and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? The hero of this story, no. <laughs> the hero has to live. How do we stop the player from killing mom? <laughs> Well, oh, now I have to. Uh, fine. Maybe this I'll is get not a branch point, powers. unfortunately. The, let me pause nope. here for a second. I just... What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Oh. oh. I believe I can fly. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important here. moment for him. And the because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Sounds good. Okay. Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. You are Michael Jackson from Thriller. Or Thriller from Michael Jackson. Does he moonwalk in that one? So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. <laughs> that wasn't right. It's an interesting idea. A survival horror game in which you could only walk backwards. Oh dear God! Oh, I guess we should start reading these to confront it. It's a short little thought. Uh, it says back. what it wants to say, and then it ends. <laughs> Didn't need anything more than that, <coughs> which to me is why it works because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. I can walk in all directions now, but yep. not any farther than this. Uh, no, you can't go forward? Well, yes, but... You are now entering. Silent Hill. Mm. 
And that's it. Okay, the <laughs> meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay, sure. <laughs> Oftentimes, Coda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? I know it's tempting, but there's actually nothing over here. Sorry. <laughs> That's all. Oh. <laughs> okay. Just leave that big open space for me to walk to and don't yep. put anything here. I mean, blame the developer, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what this game's about. Your friend sucks. This game's about blaming the developer for the games. Hmm. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, It'll bring you back up to full speed, so you can enter the door for yourself. What if I don't wanna? What if I just stay at the speed, uh, as the developer intended? I mean... What do you think? I think I'll get there eventually. It's true. Maybe there's an achievement for it. Or, like, maybe the narrator will say something. Uh, are you trying to Stanley Parable this shit? Maybe a little. <laughs> it's from the same developer. Yeah. Well, sort of. So, yeah, it, sort of. Yeah. This is very slow. You're getting there. Yeah. Like, it's not like we're not progressing. It's just slow. Are you Are you actually going to do this? I think I may. You might want to skip that. All right, of the video. future Kevin, go ahead and fast forward to the top of the goddamn stairs. Dude, every every damn time I show you this guy's game, you, you like a game by this guy, you surprise me in <laughs> uh, the the methods you take. Yeah. Like your first fucking run through of the Stanley Parable was batshit. <laughs> There's something kind of nice about all the wind noise while you're doing this. The lighting changed a little bit. Yeah. And we're going. And we're going. Yeah. God damn. We made it. We are in. The room. Only motivational quotes. A room that's long. warm and nice and filled <laughs> with little ideas for games. Stranger appears. <laughs> Coda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Stand on the next staring at a bear for three hours. <laughs> Nothing? I just did all that. Apparently thing. not. Okay, whatever. Ready, set, fish. Mm. Hang on, pause, mm. pause real quick. Can I put this thing anywhere? Yeah. What Kevin doesn't know is that while he was gone, I secretly read the tutorial and beat the entire game. That's something I'll hear later. Yes. Okay. And we're back. We had to put a cat in prison. All right. Hey, it looks kind of like we're in a prison. I wonder if there's a cat in here. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fucked up? Mm. 
Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. A puzzle. It yes. Pulls the switch and it opens the door. There you go. Mm, I don't like that. You you made the same assumption that I made. It it actually is a puzzle. Do you want a hand? Don't forget that solution, because we're okay. going to see this puzzle again soon. We're going to see it a lot. You can't just use the same puzzle over and over again. Why not? Just... So that seems to be it, right? If only you walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right. Now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Is there a way to do this without removing the walls? Um, I don't think so. Just, yeah. You didn't give me anything last time anyway. You didn't remove all of them. <laughs> Enough of them. There's a lot. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Oh, what is it? Oh, we're here again. We are now exiting. Oh, we are. Aha! Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay. What, what do you... Oh, well, I think he's gonna... ramble again. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Okay. Sure. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Okay. Strut to make all of the these games, Coda is again. using an engine called Source. Like all engines, like Source, Source engine. has certain mm -hmm. things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. Now, the tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're gonna end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Linear, boxy. <laughs> <coughs> That's a platformer now. A little bit. You can fall. Did you ever play Surf Maps in Counter Strike? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what that reminded me of. Honestly, those were a lot of fun. They Good were. time killers. So, 
while I've got you, what, what do you think so far? It's interesting. I'm mm-hmm. not really seeing the point yet. Okay. What do you think all of this says about Coda? Coda is... The, yeah. Has a hard time paying attention to things. <laughs> Sticking with the project. I mean, or he just enjoys very... Well, I guess a lot of those early games were unfinished. Yeah. I mean, that's true for a lot of artists, too. How many times have you just had a riff that you started off liking and then... That's true. I mean, I would... Mm-hmm wager to say as well this could be painting a picture of somebody with a mental disorder and that's kind of what he's getting at here what kind i haven't exactly picked up on it yet but i mean this doesn't follow like your typical logical patterns i guess so i mean uh, many games considered to be revolutionary don't that's true but i mean a lot of art is produced by people who are insane in some form or another (laughs) Uh, a, a friend of mine, Amanda, had a really good quote. Um, I, uh, she was like, nobody becomes an artist on purpose. Yeah. It's always reactionary. I win at the platform. That you do. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> open? No, it closed. Oh. What if I want to do that one? <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. (laughs) If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything (laughs) if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a <laughs> gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. It's a lot of time. Coda's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, Coda is an asshole. I'm picking that up here. I mean, he, he, was, he was cheeky. What do you think of the narrator? The narrator? I mean, the, the uh, I think his name is David or Davey. The guy who made Stanley Parable. The guy speaking. I don't understand why he's so enamored with all these games. But... It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Great, you get to hear yourself talk more. (laughs) To a certain extent, this paints an interesting atmosphere, but at the same time, it's like... Mm -hmm. You're there! Did you come from up above? What was up there? ...using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. That's interesting. That's the world above. You've been there. Now this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? (laughs) (laughs) What? But 
You, you don't understand. We're trapped here. That puzzle is our only escape. We need to get through it. You think you might get through, but trust me, you don't. Oh no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. Do you understand? It is the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you. There is nothing I want this is more. This one of the games he sent, Coda. Or not Coda, but the Davy or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With an ending. All, all of these games uh, were sent to Davy from Coda. I mean, it's like part of the games with the ending. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> there must be an ending. Hello. How did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? No, I've been right here this entire time. I suggest you go and see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can sit in a blank space for <laughs> in the middle. Who are you? Just go hang out there in the blackness <laughs> for a bit. You may not like it at first, but it'll grow on you eventually. What if I don't wanna? Then I tough shit. Solved it. <laughs> and so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. I'm just gonna sit there in the blackness for a bit. It'll grow. Yeah. It's already growing on me. That's pretty nice. I kinda like it. It's a lamppost. That it is. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants okay. a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. 